What's up everyone, it's Ray J back with another video. And this one I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'll break down some very important levels to watch for as time progresses and how the trust would look in my personal opinion. Let me just mention that I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total. And all friends very soon in just about five days from now. Anyways, guys, as a reminder, there's not really much data coming out for Monday, so you don't have to worry too much about holding anything overnight or any risks like that. And right now, Tesla is just continuing to shuffle. I did call this out earlier on. We had a nice double top leg structures led to a sell-off all the way down to our support at the 215 area. Then Tesla got bought back up, retesting 222, only to just continue to trade sideways. If you want to turn bullish on Tesla, and you could argue that we have a nice accumulation structure, we need to break 225 for confirmation. We break 225, Tesla is going to be pushing very nicely. If we fail to do so, if we end up losing 215, we could turn more bearish. We'll be looking for a test of the lows all over again. So as of right now, if you look at the last three, four hours on Tesla, it's been stuck between 219 and 222, just pretty much shuffling. Uh, could dip a little bit from here, but it's not necessarily doing bad. I would just say that we're just kind of trading sideways. We saw a little bit of a dip because we got all this bad news about downgrades from these different analysts. But so far, Tesla is still holding up decently. We're still kind of shuffling. There's not really a whole lot else going on. And I'm just going to say this. Watch the range on Tesla for three days. Tesla's been stuck within a range between 212 and 225. Whichever uh, direction breaks will determine a much bigger move. Otherwise, we're just kind of trading sideways for now. On SPY, it's very similar. On SPY, notice that we've been stuck within a range as well. We've been stuck between uh, 548, just under that as our resistance. And we have key supports around this uh, 538 to 540 area. And so far, we're just going back and forth and back and forth. Notice how we pumped and dumped and pumped again. Now we're kind of dipping a little bit, but we're still holding up decently. Uh, in my personal opinion, there could be a reversal that's forming on SPY if we break 548 by either today, by close, if not by next week. If 548 cracks, this thing will easily run to the 550s, and that's going to be a good sign. If we end up losing, okay, key support over here where these wicks happen to be the lows of the day, and I see us coming back down to 539. So as of right now, for the past hour, SPY pumped to about 540 and then kind of dipped, and we've been stuck between... These EMAs right here, 545 as resistance and 543 as support. Going back and forth and back and forth. I am seeing it tipping a little bit. So it is possible it dips a little bit lower, but I'm not going to say much until we see which way it breaks. It's just kind of shuffling. And it's also a Friday. Fridays are full of manipulation. So there's not really much going on. It's just kind of trading sideways for the past hour and a half. So just give it some time and we'll see which way it breaks. Uh, I'm going to be very patient with this one, but make sure you pay attention to the key levels because there's still a risk of us coming down to fill this gap or even just breaking out. We're still stuck in the middle, so give it some time. NVIDIA is showing some weakness. We did mention that it would likely come down to fill this gap. We're kind of dipping a little bit. Once again, we're going to be looking to see if we can try to hold around 111. If that were to break, it, I think that we could be dipping all the way down towards 108 all over again. So just be careful. There's a little bit of weakness on NVIDIA. To turn back up, you want to break past 115. We haven't really done so, and we're kind of in the red, so it's still looking a little bit weaker. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin is trying to uptrend right here, approaching 68,000. But like I said before, this is a very tough resistance. So we'll see if you reject or not, but there is more upside potential in my personal opinion. We could be testing 68,000 very soon. For the QQQ, we're kind of dipping a bit. Um, we're still stuck within a range just like SPY. So let me just show you the levels. Um, we have resistance at 462.5. Break down, we go up to about 465. We have support all the way down here around 461 and then 460. If either of these levels break, we still have this big gap to fill all the way down just under 459. So just be careful. QQQ does have a little bit of weakness, but it's trying to base in the low 460s. So we'll just have to see how well this holds up. Overall, there could be reversal metrics if we manage to break past our 50 EMA. If we break past 468, this thing could start to bounce. Haven't done so yet. So for the past three days, just like SPY, we've been stuck for the most part between 468 and 457 going back and forth and back and forth. Very volatile price action. But so far, it's not really doing much. Uh, Apple, like I said earlier, it's just trading sideways. Not really doing much all over again. If you look right here, we have this resistance at 218.5. We have support all the way down here at 217.64. All day, the past two hours, it's been back and forth, back and forth. Price action. It's not really much going on with it so far. 
It does look like it wants to base here, and I do like the fact that we're forming wicks below, which could lead to a push going into next week. I want to see it break past 220 as confirmation. If it breaks 220, we turn bullish. If it loses 216, we turn more bearish. As of right now, it's favoring uh, just kind of like shuffling for now. For the IWM, we got this dip only to rebound, so it's actually showing some life and a lot of strength compared to the markets. This is forming a nice looking double bottom like structure. This could actually lead to more upside. So next week, the setup looks more bullish and it might try to push for at least 225 plus. For Coinbase, we're shuffling just under two, uh, 242. So this is looking pretty good. Had we lost support at 240, not gotten bought back up, we could have come down to fill the gap at 236. But instead of getting bought back up, so this is favoring a push for 242. 0.76 and eventually 244 it is still favoring us a little bit more it's holding up very well so we'll just have to see how it goes for amazon we have a nice accumulation inverse head and shoulders like structure we have 182.5 if that were to break um this could lead to even more upside towards 184 and even higher levels so i'm seeing a nice potential bounce on amazon if we could get back above 184 so far so good from amazon it's showing some life meta is also showing some life a nice uh accumulation is forming as it held above 460 if we lose 460 look for the gap filled down below if we break 460 i'd look for a push all the way up towards 474. this is favoring a push back up if we could try to get back above 468 but overall it's still looking a little bit more bullish microsoft is looking like it's trying to bounce with a double bottom so next week if this develops into an inverse head and shoulders we've got to break past 430. if that's the case look for more upside for 434. and finally for google google has a nice bullish divergence we need to see this thing break past 170. If that breaks, we could try to bounce. Otherwise, we're still continuing to shuffle. Anyways, that is it for my analysis and my update for now. Uh, the market is showing some life that it wants to bounce, but we haven't broken some key levels yet to really get a bounce. Uh, we're still kind of range bound for a lot of stocks, so we'll just have to give the market some time. That also includes Tesla. Tesla's still kind of trading within this range for the past three days. So give it some time and watch and see which way it breaks for confirmation. We're going to get an answer by next week in my personal opinion. So we have to be very patient with this one. Sometimes the market is kind of annoying when things like this happen, when we just get lots of consolidation. And that's completely normal, but that's typically because we're going to be setting for a very, very big move next week. So I'm going to prepare you guys for a big move for next week. We'll see if the market gets a bounce or not. There is definitely potential for it from what I'm looking at. And we'll see how things go. Uh, but with that being said, I want to thank you all so much for listening. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll post just one more video for today to give you guys one more update on Tesla and the markets just to see how we end up closing. Until then, uh, have a great day, guys. Just know there's not really much data coming out for Monday, so you don't have to worry about uh, holding overnight or if there's any risks or anything like that. So don't worry. We'll see how things go. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you guys in just a couple more hours. Thank you and peace out.